Hello, my name is John Brozicki, and in this tutorial we're going to be discussing the debugging capabilities in Macro Scheduler. I find that the debugger is very useful in the creation of a script as well as for finding mistakes in more complicated scripts. If we go to the debug menu, the first option we have is step. What step does is it allows you to execute a single line at a time and then pause until you press the step button again. So we can activate step right here from the debug menu. We can press F8 or we can click on the debug step icon in the toolbar. So here we have a very basic script. It's going to have two variables, int total gets set to 1 int add to total gets set to 3 and what I mean my script to do is to check to see if int total is less than or equal to 1 if it is it will add them together when I run my script we can see that the answer is 1 so it's not behaving properly so what we would want to do before stepping through is we'll click on watch list here and what the watch list does is it shows you the state of all of your variables. It will also show you the state of system variables and setting. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start stepping through the script. Now you can see that the watch list was populated with a bunch of variables. Nothing within the script yet, but system and default variables are in there. So you can see what their settings are. I'm going to keep stepping through the script. Notice the highlighted line is the line that is about to be executed. So now this is the first assignment. After I step through here, you will see that int total has been set to 1, and int add to total has been set to 3. And now I'm about to execute this if statement and you see that it went right past it which means that the condition was not met and then it will give me the output in a message so really what I would want to do is make this less than or equal and now if we step through you will see that it does execute the command to add the two together. Now one thing you may have noticed is each time a variable is altered, either it's set or it's changed, the default behavior is to have it pop up to the top of the watch list. And this makes it very easy for you to see what is being changed. But there may be times when you have a lot of variables that you know the relative position and you don't want them to be popping up. You can go into the debug and you can say lock watch list position. When this is set, the position will not change. Some other things you can do here, if you have a lot of variables, you can right click and you can sort and there it's going to sort all of the variables in alphabetical order. And finally you can do a search. So if you know what your variable is called, you can type it in there or type part of it in there and then click on this button to search through and it will jump right down. And that is a quick introduction to the step command. I made a small change here to show you the next option, step over. You can see that step over is ghosted right now because it cannot be accessed. What step over allows you to do is anytime you hit a subroutine, it allows you to execute the entire subroutine and then go back into step mode. So in this example, my if command is going to check on a condition and then it's going to call a subroutine we can see that the subroutine goes through and sets the value of three variables. 
And a lot of times if you have a subroutine that's going to do some work for you, you've already tested that out and you don't want to have to step through every single option. So let's start stepping through right here. I'm going to do it right from the debug menu so you can see that I can't step through yet. But once I hit the subroutine, I now have the option to step over. So again, what's going to happen here is it's going to do everything in the subroutine, then it's going to come back to the next line and pause again. So if I go ahead and step over, you can see that it set the values to X, Y, and Z, and now is paused on the next line. So that can be useful again if you have a subroutine or multiple subroutines, you know that everything's good in there and you just want to be able to step over them. The next debug option that we'll look at is trace. Trace is simply an automated step. You pick the value interval in integer seconds that you want it to pause between each step that it executes. You can set a value of zero, but it will still pause two tenths of a second between each step. There's also an option here to refocus windows. Normally when your script is interacting with another Windows process, say Notepad, you want that process to have focus. When you're debugging, it's going to come back and show you the debugging window, and that can throw off your focus. Refocus windows will make sure that it sets it back here. Sometimes you get strange consequences in doing so, so you want to play around with this option. In this test script that we're going to run, it is going to set focus each time. So it's not really necessary here, but we'll show you the difference. So first I'm going to set the refocus windows option on and go ahead and run the trace. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to do the trace again without doing the refocusing windows. And there you have it. So, trace automates the step through for you if you don't need to really pause for any period of time to look at something but you just kind of want to watch it as it's flowing through it's a great option to use and you have the ability to control where the focus is going and that's something that you probably want to play around with to get a feel for next let's take a look at breakpoints and variable breakpoints so first we have a simple script here with two variables, a count and a value. Count starts out at 1, value starts out at 0. Then while the count is less than or equal to 500, it's going to do this logic here. It's going to increment our value. If the value happens to equal 251, then it's going to tell us what our count is currently, which should be 250. And we're also incrementing our count. Then at the end, it's going to tell us what our count and what our value is. So if we wanted to see what's going to happen at some high value, such as 250, we could step through, we could trace through. That's going to take us quite a while. If we know we want to take a look at a certain uh, point in the program or at a certain value, breakpoints and variable breakpoints can do that for us. So first, let's look at a breakpoint. Since we have this little if and if statement here, I can insert a breakpoint here. And what's going to happen when I run the script, it's going to go into step mode once I hit that breakpoint. And because the breakpoint is within logic, it's not going to hit right away. It's going to wait until it has to run this. So what should happen is it should run the program 
and then when the int value equals 251, it will pause the program and put it into step mode. Let's go ahead and run this. Here you can see we've hit the breakpoint. If we look over at our watch list, int value equals 251. In count still equals 251 because we haven't run this statement here and now we're in step mode so we can step through we get the message count is currently 251 and now we see that int count has incremented to 252 so I'm gonna stop this I'm gonna remove the breakpoint and instead of doing it this way what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable breakpoint. So here you can set pairs of values, variables, and their values. So I want to stop it at int value. Let's stop it at 250. So we, it's not this logic stopping it, it's being stopped here. So I will put in int value equals 250. Now it's going to do the same thing. When I run the script, it stopped. So our value is still 250. And now we'll run through this here. So that's a very useful thing to use if you want to look at something when it reaches a certain um, value. You can get the program to run and just stop and let you step through at that point. One thing you want to remember to do when you're done with your debug is to clear this value out, otherwise it will keep pausing and going into step mode at that value. There are also a number of options under the debug menu that can control how things work. Let's take a look at some of them. One is run from top. Default behavior is wherever I put my cursor when I run, it's going to run from top down. However, if I turn this option off, it will run from wherever the cursor is. So if I run this now, I get literal strings here because these variables were never defined because it only ran this line. So you can just step through certain part of code or omit part of it depending on whether you set run from top on or off. You can also set refocus windows. We discussed that when we were looking at trace. You can also set it here. You can also set it to show watch list, which is right here. You can have it automatically open watch list on debug. This again is a default. You can change this if you don't want it to open the watch list when you start a debug. We also mentioned the lock watch list position. Locking that will prevent the uh, last variable uh, changed or initialized from appearing at the top. And then you can change the debug line color. And you may have noticed that I have uh, mine set to a nice bright yellow so it stands out. So you can go in there and pick whatever kind of color you would like to make it stand out better for you. Let's finish this tutorial up with an example that puts into play some of the debugging techniques that we've just reviewed. So here I have a sample script and one of the first things it's going to do is it's going to read in a file into a variable. And I can show you what the file looks like. It's just a text file with uh, several names in it and I will go ahead and step through and instead of seeing all of those names going to string file data I'm getting no file. An error message which means either the file doesn't exist, it's misspelled, or there could be a file permission issue. So if I take a look it turns out that it's not in the root directory the file is actually in a folder called mstest. So that was a typo and I can go in here, fix that, and now I can step through again. And now I can see 
that I have all of my names loaded in. On the next command, I'm going to use the separate command to separate all of the individual names into an array, string file line, and I'm using the carriage return line feed character to separate them on. And I can see that I have all of my names, everything looks good. The next command I have is kind of a complex um, statement. It's a while command. What I want to do is I want to loop through the file um, up to the number of lines that are read in the file. Um, but here it's saying no more than uh, to stop before it gets equal to three because I only want to read through the first three entries. And if I see that Amanda Apple is the entry, I want to um, send a message to the screen that says Amanda Apple was found in the top three and give the position first, second, or third. The um, comparison here stops it from being a problem if there's only one or two entries in there. It will not go more farther into the file than that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And we see when it completes that it never output this message. And yet from looking at the file and even looking at our watch list here, we can see that Amanda Apple is indeed in the top three. She's at, her, her name is in the third position. So what we can do here is we want to see what happens when it hits three. So I'm going to use variable breakpoint. I'm going to type in the loop because that's being in incremented each time it goes through. And I want to stop when that equals three so I can see what's going on. So now I'll go ahead and run the program and we'll see that the debugger has stopped it when the value equals three and now I can step through. So here I'm back at the top of my loop and I want my loop to be run when the value still equals three. But when I step through, I see that it jumped out. It did not try to execute the if statement, which means it didn't meet the condition here. And if I look over, I'm only checking less than three, not equal. So if I add the equal sign back in, go back and run my script, and I still have my debug in there. So one thing that you want to remember when you're done, you want to clear out your breakpoint. And then I can just continue running. I now get the output that I wanted and expected. So hopefully this has been beneficial to you and you've seen that debugging can be very beneficial not only in finding problems but in the development of your script. Checking.